Hi guys, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at um, a dance with a dead track. Um, now, there is listening obviously to their music. There is a few different styles you can hear in there. So I'm going to be doing um, dance with the dead over a couple of different videos. Um, the first style I'm going to be looking at is the sort of rock orientated style with the the heavy guitars. Um, and one of the tracks I was looking at was Blood Moon, um, the track that the bootlegged with Queen. I thought that's quite a good track. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little bit of how um, you can get sort of their sound, what sort of riffs they've gone with, uh, what changes they've used, and any techniques and stuff that I've, I've sort of looked at, uh, figured out while I've been uh, sort of trying to recreate the track. One thing I will say, though, is that these Dance of the Dead tracks are very rock orientated so there's a lot of guitars in there and all these guitars are played and recorded like live there's no way you can get a vst to give you this sort of give you the sound that they get so anyone thinking that you can sort of make a, uh, a dance with a dead track with vsts you, you know you've more chance of elvis being alive to be fair because uh like i said all their tracks are recorded um, are, are all you know a, a guitar guitarists are playing the tracks and they're being recorded live um, and then I'm dragged in after um, now there is a, a few ways a few things that you can do to try and manipulate that I will show you a few different ways um, of how to get an electric guitar sound um, a very basic one and um, but I'll start off with with the track so first of all what they've got in in the in the blood moon um, track is they've got an app which is just a, a few notes just repeating over and over And what they then do is when it kicks in with the just the bass, the kick drum, is they just repeat that same riff but with a, a synth. Uh, the drums as well are very rock orientated as well, um, not very synth with the snares you can hear I've got sort of a synth wave, um, sort of a drum machine sound to them, but the kicks and stuff from listening to the track sound very rock orientated, like uh, like an acoustic you know, not not made with uh, drum machines, made more real with proper drum kits and whatnot. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a selection of drums um, in the comments below, so you can go there and you can grab the drums, um, just a few sort of acoustic sounding drums, rock uh, sounding drums. If you want to try using these tracks, I'll leave a link below where you can you can grab some of those. Okay. Okay, so just focusing on the drums at the moment, what you've got is you've got this um, sort of drum beat. Very sort of queen. And, then, and that goes along uh, nicely. And then when it comes drops into the actual um, sort of drop of the track, it, it just goes back to a normal, a normal drum beat, um, but half step. So this is like 164 beats per minute, but they've actually half, half dips, so you get a slow down so the actual if you was to do a sort of drum beat uh, wait, wait one second a drum beat at this um at this bpm at like a standard drum beat it would be very very fast so you sort of get you get something like that what they've done is like i said they've half timed it so it's what's it's half time so um you get a kick and then there's nothing on the second and then where the snare would normally be the snares here sort of just sort of doubled the length of everything and you get a sort of slowed down uh drum beat uh, it gives it more room so you've got the boom 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 like sort of drum loop here 
then it drops into something a little less. Now, what they also do is add a riding over the top, um, just to emphasize the kick drum a bit more. Although you can hear that playing there now in the mix, it's very, very subtle and, and faint. So if you listen for the ride, listen for the ride coming in. Yeah, so it's very, very subtle in the mix, you can hear it. Now, for the guitars, how have I got these guitars? I certainly don't play guitars, um, and I certainly can't play them, and if I did, I wouldn't be able to play it this well. So what these actually are, these are actually, you can buy these as part of a pack and it's called the um, the, the Vengeance uh, Rhythm Guitars. This is uh, volume one. Um, and what you get with these is you actually get these come in, in notes. Um, and some even come in chords. That's one way to really cheat because all these guitars are, are recorded at, at Vengeance. They're really, really high quality and um, really, really good stuff. Um, so what I've done, I've laid some of these guitars in. Um, so and then obviously when they're when they're dry, they sound like this. And then I've added a few um, processes to make them sit in the mix. So I've added an EQ first of all. Um, I've cut out around here and I've boosted around sort of the, mid, the low, sort of mid low end there. Um, I've also added this OTT, which is um, like an upwards downwards compressor, so it does both at the same time. And I brought it right, I've just kept the settings the same, brought it down to 34%. Now, this here you can actually get free, you can download. So, if you just search for it, and um, you can download this for free. Um, it works very similar to I think if Ableton users will have this sort of built in anyway. And then I've added some reverb on it as well. The guitar samples, when you actually drag them in, are very, very well processed, so you don't need to do a lot to them. I've just added some reverb in. Now, one of the things that I will say is the guitars are very low uh, in frequencies. So that, to get the bass to work with that, um, I've, had to, I've had to scoop out the bass. So this is the bass by itself. And this is a, a silent, uh, sorry, uh, what is it, serum is it? This is a serum uh, patch. I will include uh, uh, some patches and stuff below as well. And to get this serum patch to work with the bass, obviously the bass, I want the bass, the, the low end of the bass to come through. So I'm going to sculpt that with the bass using EQ. So what I've got on the bass, I've got a, a pro EQ here. I've boosted a little bit of these. The reason I've boosted these is because when this, I've dipped this out. So I've dipped quite a bit of EQ out here. Um, and I just want to emphasize these two points at either end of this EQ. So about 60 and about 2000. But I've dipped it out about here. Without the EQ, you can hear it's um, there's a lot of uh, mid and low ends in there. Um, with it. And with it off, it will work nicely with the guitar. So if you're ever really using guitar and stuff like that, you, you know, and you want the low end of the guitar, so you want to use the sort of grunge uh, rock guitars with a lot of low ending, um, let them be prominent in your mix. So you always got to pick something that you think is going to be the main, sort of the main selling point. 
you know, if you like, in your mix. Um, you know, you you want people to listen to, and then you mix mix everything around that. So what we've gone for is we've gone for the guitars with the bass around it. Now, what we've got here, we've got a very simple uh, sort of chord structure here: E, E, C, and then and D. And the, and the electric guitars just play along with that, and then when it drops down into the drop, it goes to the it goes uh, C D E, and that's what gives it a, a nice feel when it drops here, because it's basically staying on the, it's basically staying on you know it's staying on this note here rather than going back up to. We have a couple of little fills as well, uh, so we'll look at these in a bit more detail, drum fills. And just to give it a bit more, so rather than using sort of effects and stuff, they've gone with the, the sort of live drum fills. Um, so the lead, once I say about the lead, is the lead is basically, it's a few of the same notes just repeating the same thing over and over. Um, so it's basically like a pedal lead, it's just a few notes, just playing the same thing over and over. And so we'll look at them leads in, in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, so that will basically be about it for looking at the, the the track um we've got so we've got an app but then we've got the the app underneath so i'm just it's just real the real basics of a track stuff to look out for in a track um so the chords are very very basic chords i mean these chords here uh, are quite famous uh, maniac chords they've used you know they've been used but they've gone a, a clever way about, about using it by changing by going in with the high note first and obviously doubling the length one thing I will say is, towards this second break, what they've done is they've added some extra riffs in. These are just random notes. It doesn't really matter what sound they've gone for. And it's just something that you can do in your mix. So if you have one part of the track here, and this part here is basically just a repeat of the first part, but to make it sound different, just add some extra riffs in. So we've now got this. So one thing I've noticed in a lot of Dance With The Dead stuff is a lot of repeating um, sort of melodies and riffs in there. What I mean by that is it's the same sort of notes being played over and over and repeating throughout. So we'll just take a quick look at that. Um, so we'll grab we'll grab this bass, bring it over here. We'll grab this and we'll grab this. And then we'll grab a melody too. So I've got into more detail on how you can um, sort of create melodies um, on, on another video, but I'll I'll quickly go over it again here now. So if we, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try create um, sort of a melody like this. So we'll, ch we'll change the chords around a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll change that, we'll delete these and we'll just change them around. So I'm gonna write some some different chords here now. We'll go with Okay, so we'll go with them chords. Uh, them them bass notes. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to draw in um, some chords. So we'll just add a a blank sampling. We'll paste in the chords. Then we will take away, delete all these, and then Control A and we'll drag them out. So these are the root notes of of the chords. So we'll then go up again, a whole octave up. And then what we'll do then is we'll add the top note in to the chords. So you go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, seven. And that's the top note of the chord. So you've got the one, and then on the seventh, you've got the top one. And then we'll fill in the major minors. Just fill these in as we go along. So that will be our chords. If we add a piano or something now, let's just, check, let's just stick a piano in. Uh, I think somebody asked as well, what piano do I use? Uh, True Pianos is a very basic one that I would use for um, just for working out melodies and writing melodies and stuff like that. So now we've got some very basic, um, we've got some very basic chords in there. And we've actually just deleted a lot of them, haven't we? Can we undo that, can we? No, well, let's undo it. So we'll just go back in and redraw me again. Okay, so was it D, E, let's look, spot on. Okay, so these will be the, um, the notes we've gone for. So we'll mute the, and we'll go into here and we'll delete this riff. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get these chords close together as we can, because we've got look a high one up here and a low one here. So we'll get these chords close together. So maybe we'll drop that one down to there. Uh, we'll drop that down to there. So we have them nice and close together now. And we can now try to write something. So we can see we've got this note. And this note repeats. So we could maybe. So what we're going to do is we want to pick two or three notes that we're going to repeat throughout, um, and then we'll maybe change one or two notes. So we could go with. And then we'll take take away this note this time. And we'll go back in again. We'll do the same again. Okay, so we'll have a little mess around now. We can maybe change that note to there. And that note to there. Maybe change that note to there. So what we've built there is a very, very simple sort of riff that's repeating. So we've got the same note, same sort of structure, just repeating and repeating over, uh, just changing one or two notes, um, which is something they've done with this, the lead in, in this track here, um, sort of uh, a repeating sort of pedal riff. Um, so that's what we've done there. That's what we've basically done. We've basically got a, a same riff. You could even keep these notes in if you wanted. And you could delete them out and you could do something a bit different. You could do... And you could do something like that, so same notes and again, just changing a couple of notes to make it sound slightly different. Um, so that's really about it for the melodies. Um, and that's for, I will go to the mix and have a look at what I've added on to each of the tracks. There's not a lot been added on, like the the so the kick. This is got a bit of EQ going in the kick as well. So let's play the kick. So we've done very much what we've done with the bass as well. We've cut a lot of the low end out. And remember, we've got the bass side changing as well. And then we just added a compressor to that as well, just to make it a bit tighter. Um, so the snare now, we'll look at the snare. Dry snare.
Mm. We've added a vintage verb in there. Uh, we've took the mix. The this is just uh, a medium gate. It's in presets under medium gate. Medium gate. What I've done with this, I've brought the decay up, and I've brought the mix down to thirty. What I've then added in is a EQ. So we've cut some of the loads there, boosted a little bit around the tone of the snare, so where the snare actually hits. Took away some of that middle as well, and added a little bit of sort of mid highs in. And then what we've added in is a transient processor. So what this does, this takes the peak of the actual snare. Um, so it takes the peak of the snare. Um, and what it does is it, so if I show you what it's doing here now. adding a tack to it so it's raising the volume of just the peak and obviously go this way it's, it's ducking the volume out so if we go this way it's actually raising the peak and it's only ever so slightly actually doing that what we're actually really using this for is the release because it does the same with the release so what we've got here is when the when it's when it's coming off so the release is this this is the release we've actually got this to make the release louder so if we turn that like completely off As the snare's going down with the reverb, it's sort of coming back up a little bit. Um, as it's drifting off, it's coming back up and giving it that... Um, you can really, really hear the uh, the gated reverb part of it. And then to top it off, we've just added um, an EQ on, just to make sure there's no mad frequency or anything going everywhere. So a threshold, uh, quite a high attack to let a lot of that stuff through, otherwise it would be pointless doing it. Low uh, sort of free ratio and a low release as well. And then when you put them all together... So that's the, uh, and then we have the app. We've done the same thing with the app, with uh, with the transient process. What we've done is we've actually added quite a lot of attack to it. So if we go to the app, you can see every single peak it's bringing up a little bit. And then the OTT on top of that as well. So transient process is very good for, for kicks and stuff as well. If you've got a kick and it's not quite cutting through the mix, you know, if it's if the bass level's right and every time you, you mess, so if you've got a kick in the mix and you're listening to it and the volume is going up and down and you're messing with the volume but you can't get it to sit right, um, you, you know, you turn it up a little bit more than there's too much bass, you turn it down, there's not enough bass. One of the things you can use to get through your kick, to make the kick cut through is obviously the attack of the kick and this is a great tool to use. Um, on the attack of the kick there is another one around as well although there's quite a few around but this is the one that, that i would recommend because it comes built in and it's free with some versions of full studio but there's also um i think there's an ssl one as well um what is it oh what's going on and um, so there's another one i used to use before this came along um the S spl transient designer and it looks exactly the same. So you got your attack, your sustain, and your gain and whatnot. So it's exactly the same um, as as the transient processor. It's another great way to um, inject a bit of... So also if you... Uh, this is obviously outside of synthwave music, but if you're making other types of music, um, for like some big room or anything like that, and you really want your synths to cut through, or even if you've got some sort of... You, know, you want your pianos to cut for anything like that add a transient processor onto it and what it will do is the start of every note it will bring up the attack and it will merely make it punch through um, but remember to make sure you're controlling that as well because it can be quite wild as well sometimes so i've already gone through the guitar processes there and the lead i've just got some eq in the lead i've cut a lot of this out because you don't need this the guitars the bass and everything's already occupying all this space but i have tried to boost it up a little bit around around here just to make it set a bit more and i've made it a bit brighter uh, at 10,000 um, and then what's this I'm not sure what even what this is let's see so 
so this is the this this sort of riff here that's going on. And this is the PGA X. Uh, this is actually a, not a bad synth. It's actually free. So without all the stuff on it, you get this. With delay. Reverb and EQ. And then the OTT on top as well. Right, guys, that's really about it. Like I said, a couple of the, the main... So the main point to take away from, if you're wanting to try and sound like Dance with the Dead, I, I can sort of summarise it in a few points. Um, the chords and stuff are very basic, but what, what makes this stand out is the guitars that they use in the, in the tracks. The guitars are, are played by very, very well... Uh, very, uh, you know, excellent guitar players and are recorded brilliantly. Um, so you're going to find it very, very difficult to imitate the guitars. Um, one of the things I've suggested using is the Vengeance packs um, to to try and, you know, get your guitars. Or even if you can get together with a guitarist and get some and riffs and stuff recorded, and that, that's fantastic. Or even if you play your guitars yourself, um, that's fantastic. So one of the, the main things, obviously, is the guitars. One of the next things I will say is... Um, the rock element of it, um, it's quite it's quite rocky as well. Um, so you've got a lot of rock um, oriented drums, not so much drum machines, more rock oriented drums, um, acoustic drums. Don't get me wrong, they will use sort of old drum machines and stuff, but you prominent in the mix, you can hear these uh, these other sort of instruments. And I'm going to leave a link in the below for the um, for some drums and stuff that you can maybe use some maybe rock drums and acoustic drums and a few synthwave drums as well, just for good measure. Um, so again with the bass making sure your bass and your guitars fit well together that's one of the main things that you've got to when you're dealing with a lot of guitars and stuff and powerful low end guitars you've got to make sure that your bass is sitting well with it and one of the, the, the ways to do that is to sculpt out the middle part of the bass so your bass is not prominent in the mix the bass is just there just for your low end really um, so that's one of the things I would say as well and one of the other things I'd say about Dance with the Dead is the repeating melodies and riffs like even this riff up here as well it's very sort of it's, a, it's very similar notes, two or three, maybe even, you know, two, three or four notes repeating over and over. Um, and same in here, it's two or three notes just repeating over and over. So I'll give you a quick run through on how you can sort of create stuff like that and a way to people that aren't really music, musically gifted or people that are just starting out and, you know, don't have a lot of musical experience with notes and chords. That's one way you can, you can do that is if you lay your chords down on a ghost track um, and then group them together, so get them as close as you can together. Um, and then just go ahead and, and, and stick your notes in. Look at what's standing out, you know, what notes are standing out. Uh, what I'll also do, guys, actually, is I'll actually just zip this whole project file up as well. Um, I know there's a lot of VSCs and stuff that you might not use or you might not have. Um, but I'll, I'll zip it up anyway and I'll leave it in the comments below as well. So if you're a FL Studio user, um, you can grab the, the full project file as well. Um, but apart from that, that's it, guys. And thanks for watching.